today she is non hypoglossal nerve it is 12th cranial nerve it, what are the functional components here there will be two functional components for this nerve general somatic efferent and general somatic afferent right efferent means what motor fibers which are arising from this functional component will be supplying to the muscles of tongue is it so the nucleus of general somatic efferent is hypoglossal nucleus this hypoglossal nucleus is present within the medulla oblongata at the floor of the fourth ventricle deep to the hypoglossal triangle if you take the posterior view actually this is the anterior view of brain stem if you take the posterior view of brain stem you can see fourth ventricle like this this is fourth ventricle this is fourth ventricle here stria medullaris here median sulcus here one triangle will be there and here another triangle will be there this triangle what we are calling hypoglossal triangle deep to this triangle we can found 2 cm long nucleus that nucleus is hypoglossal nucleus right this hypoglossal nucleus present in the medulla oblongata deep to the hypoglossal triangle so general somatic efferent component is hypoglossal nucleus then what about afferent general somatic afferent afferent means sensory sensations that means proprioceptive sensations from the tongue will be carried through this nerve and reaches to the mesencephalic nucleus of fifth cranial nerve right so here general somatic afferent is mesencephalic nucleus of fifth cranial nerve right so these are the functional components then what is the nucleus of hypoglossal nerve as we discussed earlier this is hypoglossal nucleus this is present deep to the hypoglossal triangle and it is present in the medulla oblongata deep to the floor of fourth ventricle then if you take this nucleus separately this nucleus will be divided into two parts one part is solely for the genioglossus and another part is for rest of the muscles right so let me take here cerebral cortex imagine this is cerebral cortex right here also i'll take cerebral cortex and i will take another nucleus here this is one hypoglossal nucleus and this is another hypoglossal nucleus this is midline so if you take the cerebral cortex this is cerebral cortex then this is hypoglossal nucleus this hypoglossal nucleus divided into two parts this is for the genioglossus right and this is for the rest of the muscles clear now fibers from the cerebral cortex reaches to the nucleus of cranial nerves is it or not so those fibers what we are calling corticonuclear fibers those corticonuclear fibers for the genioglossus are coming only from opposite side that means fibers coming from the contralateral side see these fibers coming from contralateral side right of course if you draw this side these are the corticonuclear fibers for what for genioglossus right then for the rest of the muscles corticonuclear fibers are coming from both sides that means they come from contralateral side and also they come from same side that means ipsilateral side is it clear so this is about nucleus of hypoglossal nerve or hypoglossal nucleus it is 2 cm long present deep to the hypoglossal triangle now we will see what is the course of hypoglossal nerve see here we have to discuss under two headings intracranial course and extracranial course if you take the intracranial course this nerve is coming forwards see this is the hypoglossal nerve it is coming forward within the medulla oblongata lateral to the medial longitudinal bundle tectospinal tract medial lemniscus and pyramid or pyramidal tract is it very simple see i have done some structures here this is the nerve this nerve is lateral to these structures what are those structures medial longitudinal bundle tectospinal tract and this is medial lemniscus and this is pyramidal tract 
right then what are the structures present lateral to this nerve see here this is reticular formation and this is olivary nucleus right so this is the intracranial course after passing in between the olive and pyramid it comes out in between the olive and pyramid at the anterior lateral sulcus see this is anterior lateral sulcus this nerve is attaching to the brain stem at the junction of pyramid and olive is it or not if you wanted to say specifically at the anterior lateral sulcus by how many rootlets 10 to 15 rootlets 10 to 15 rootlets see i have drawn so many rootlets all these rootlets united and forms two roots right so this is one root and this is another root these two roots pierces the dura mater at the hypoglossal canal separately see here i have drawn separate separate foramens see here this is one root this is one root these roots are piercing the dura mater separately and comes out from the dura mater at the hypoglossal canal right so when it reaches to the hypoglossal canal it will comes out from the cranial cavity through the hypoglossal canal that means up to here is intracranial course recollect once again intracranial course of the hypoglossal nerve it is arising from the hypoglossal nucleus which is present deep to the hypoglossal triangle it runs forwards and laterally lateral to the medial longitudinal bundle tectospinal tract medial lemniscus and pyramidal tract then this nerve present medial to the reticular formation and olivary nucleus after that it comes out in between the olive and pyramid that means from the anterior lateral sulcus see from here it is coming out this one is here right so this nerve attaches to the brain stem at the anterior lateral sulcus this nerve arises by 10 to 15 rootlets these rootlets united and forms two roots see here these two roots pierces the dura mater separately and it reaches to the foramen of hypoglossal nerve what is that canal hypoglossal canal or anterior condylar foramen through that it comes out right so up to that intracranial course of hypoglossal nerve then extracranial course see from here extracranial course see this canal is hypoglossal canal right from here it is coming out clear now we will discuss about extracranial course of hypoglossal nerve when it reaches out from the cranial cavity first it is present deep to the this vein what is this vein internal jugular vein see here internal jugular vein will be like this first it is present deep to the internal jugular vein right after that it descends down in between the internal carotid artery and internal jugular vein see here it is descending down actually i cut this internal jugular vein here actually it will be like this clear so it runs in between the internal carotid artery and internal jugular vein after that it crosses the vagus nerve see here that green color structure what i have drawn is vagus nerve it crosses the vagus nerve then it descends downwards in between the internal carotid artery and internal jugular vein then at the lower border of posterior belly of digastric here there will be posterior belly of digastric at the lower border of posterior belly of digastric it turns forwards that means it runs forwards and it crosses the internal carotid artery and external carotid artery right after that it crosses the loop of the lingual artery see here this is loop of lingual artery it crosses the loop of lingual artery deep to the styloid process here styloid process will be there and posterior belly of digastric will be there right deep to the posterior belly of digastric and styloid process and if you want to write you can write parotid gland also right so it present deep to the styloid process posterior belly of digastric and parotid gland right after that it enters into the submandibular region see after crossing the loop of lingual artery it is entering into the submandibular region is it so 
once it reaches to the submandibular region it is present over these two muscles this one and this one this muscle is hyoglossus this muscle is hyoglossus and what is this muscle genioglossus right so it is present over the hyoglossus and genioglossus right then it is present deep to the mainly submandibular gland and mylohyoid muscle so i have told medial relations and lateral relations laterally mylohyoid muscle and submandibular gland medially are which is present over these structures those structures are medial structures what are those hyoglossus and genioglossus after passing over these muscles it enters into substance of the tongue it enters into substance of tongue and it supplies to the extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of tongue that means it supplies to both extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of tongue except one muscle that is palatoglossus muscle what are the tongue muscles what are the extrinsic muscles of tongue styloglossus genioglossus then hyoglossus and palatoglossus palatoglossus is not supplied by palatoglossus is not supplied by hypoglossal nerve palatoglossus muscle is supplied by cranial accessory nerve through the vagus nerve right important mcq clear so these three extrinsic muscles and also intrinsic muscles what are the intrinsic muscles longitudinal muscles transverse muscles vertical muscles is it these intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of tongue supplied by hypoglossal nerve clear so this is the course right distribution also i told but one more time i will tell you in the branches let me tell you extracranial course one more time see this nerve is coming out from the hypoglossal canal through the hypoglossal canal it is coming out as soon as it is coming out from the cranial cavity it is present deep to the internal jugular vein then it inclines down inclines means it descends down and present in between the internal carotid artery and internal jugular vein then it crosses the vagus nerve after that it descends downwards in between the internal carotid artery and internal jugular vein and it is present deep to the styloid process and posterior belly of digastric along with that parotid gland right then at the lower border of posterior belly of digastric it turns forward that means it turns forward and it crosses the internal carotid artery external carotid artery loop of lingual artery after crossing the loop of lingual artery it enters into submandibular region within the submandibular region it is present over the hyoglossus muscle and genioglossus muscle right after running over these muscles it enters into the substance of the tongue and supplies to both extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of tongue except palatoglossus clear so this is the course now we will see what are the branches it is having branches of one nerve one nerve means the branches which are belongs to hypoglossal nerve right and it carries some fibers from the c1 also c1 nerve is there no from the c1 nerve also it carries some fibers right so first we will discuss about what are the branches which are belongs to hypoglossal nerve proper then we will discuss about nerve fibers which are belongs to c1 right first if you take fibers which are belongs to hypoglossal nerve they supplies to all intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of tongue except palatoglossus that's it then what are the branches which are belongs to c1 those branches we will see first branch is meningeal branch see here first branch is meningeal branch that meningeal branch belongs to c1 nerve those fibers that means meningeal branches from the hypoglossal nerve passes behind that means they go back through the what is this foramen hypoglossal foramen and reaches to the cranial cavity supplies to the bones and meninges of anterior part of posterior cranial fossa very simple meningeal branch goes back it is having recurrent course it goes backwards and 
passes through the hypoglossal canal, reaches to the posterior cranial fossa and supplies to the meninges and some bones. Right? So, that is meningeal branch. Clear? Then, here I have drawn one branch. This branch is descending down and it is forming the loop. What is this loop? Ansa cervicalis. Right? So, what is this branch? This is descendants hypoglossi. What is it? Descendants hypoglossi. Clear? So, this is descendants hypoglossi. Right? Then, what are the other branches? See here. These fibers coming like this and they are supplying to what is this muscle? From thyroid cartilage to the hyoid bone. Thyrohyoid. Right? And see here, what is this muscle? From the genial tubercle to the hyoid bone. What is this? Geniohyoid. So it is supplying to those muscles. So fibers belongs to hypoglossal nerve proper supplies to all extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of tongue except palatoglossus. Palatoglossus is supplied by cranial accessory nerve through the vagus nerve. Then nerves belongs to C1 nerve. Those branches supplying to the meninges of anterior part of posterior cranial fossa through the meningeal branch. Right? Then another branch is descendants hypoglossi. This is Descendants hypoglossi, right? So, this is descendants hypoglossi, that is one branch. Then, nerves belongs to C1, comes forwards within the hypoglossal nerve and supplies to thyrohyoid and geniohyoid. Clear? So, this is about anatomy of hypoglossal 